In this example, we'd like to calculate the concentration of carbon monoxide in a room. One of the things to note is that um, the Occupational Safety and Health uh, Administration, they have standards for uh, carbon monoxide exposure. And uh, the maximum time-weighted average for CO uh, over an uh, eight-hour period is uh, 35 ppm, or parts per million. And then a maximum limit is 200 parts per million. So we want to be able to do the calculations in a room, assuming that we know an inlet flow rate of carbon monoxide and uh, this well mix. So we're going to assume a room size here of uh, this room is going to be okay, so uh, 10 feet by 20 feet and 9 foot high ceilings. We're going to have a carbon monoxide leak coming in at 0.1 milliliters per second. Okay, so a milliliter is also a, a cubic centimeter and uh, we assume that um, there's a constant number of moles of gas in the room or N and uh, so that means that we also have um, 0 0.1 milliliters per second uh, leaving the room. Now um, this is uh, well mixed gas uh, leaving the room, so it's going to be a co combination of air and carbon monoxide, whereas this is uh, this inlet is going to be pure carbon monoxide. Okay, so we want to be able to calculate this in, in ppm. What we'll do is we'll first of all write just a species balance. Okay, so I want to be able to calculate um, the accumulation, and that's going to be the inlet minus the outlet. Uh, molar flow rates of carbon monoxide. So let's um, break this down and uh, calculate each one of these terms individually and then we'll, I'll show you how to integrate this either analytically or um, in a future example numerically. Okay so let's just look at the number of moles of CO inside this control volume. Now if we assume ideal gas law, which is the pressure times the volume equals the number of moles times the ideal gas law times temperature, then we can calculate the number of moles that are uh, in this room. Um, so let's go ahead and do that. Um, so if we have um, the number of moles is going to be N equals P times V over R times T. Let's just assume this is one atmosphere. So that's 1.01 .01 times 10 to the fifth pascals times the volume. Okay, so the volume is going to be 20 times 10 times 9, and that's going to be foot cubed. And so we're going to convert that into uh, meters cubed. Okay, uh, so we have the pressure, we have the volume. do the unit conversion on that. We have the ideal gas law, joules per mole uh, Kelvin. Okay, so there's our ideal. And then let's just assume it's about room temperature, maybe uh, 300 Kelvin. Okay, so that gives us the number of moles in the room. But that does not give us the number of moles of CO in the room. So the number of moles of CO in the room is actually going to be the mole fraction, YCO, times the number of moles in the room. Okay, so um, we'll just assume that the number of moles in the room is going to be uh, constant. Okay, so we can calculate this in the right units and then uh, just assume that n value is going to be constant. Okay, so let's go on to uh, the number of moles, the molar flow rate coming into the room. Okay, so the second term, which is going to be n dot co n, and, uh, and that is also um, going to be, um, you know, we have, we have a volumetric flow rate coming in. Okay, so we have V dot equals our 0 0.1 milliliters per second. Okay, so how do we calculate the molar flow rate from the volumetric flow rate? Well, we can do that again with the ideal gas law. And so we'll say the molar flow rate of um, carbon monoxide coming in is going to be equal to P times V, carbon monoxide coming in, divided by R times T. Okay, so um, we have the pressure, 
we have the volumetric flow, we'll put that in uh, SI units. We'll have the ideal gas uh, constant, and we'll also have the temperature. Okay, so we can calculate um, you know, the N dot CO in. Okay, now what about the N dot CO out? Okay, now we, if we assume it's well uh, mixed, okay, then, um, then we know that um, the Y CO, the mole fraction inside the room, is going to be equal to the mole fraction coming out of the room. Okay, so um, this, this is going to be YCO times the mole, uh, molar flow rate coming out of the room. Now if we scroll up a little bit, we'll see that um, this has constant number of moles in here. And so the molar flow rate coming in is equal to um, it's going to be equal to the molar flow rate going out. Now these are in volumetric, so again we're going to have to calculate the, uh, the molar flow rate. Now that's actually, we already did that. We already did that right here. So um, we know that N dot out is going to be equal to NCO in. Okay, so that's just going to be a constant. But here we have another variable, YCO. So let me just go ahead and make this a little bit smaller so we can see the whole thing. Um, so let's go ahead and put all of these terms into this differential equation right here um, for our NCO, NCO in, and NCO out, N dot CO out. Okay, so we'll go ahead and substitute those in and then we'll solve our differential equation. Okay, so um, let's go ahead and just start with um, with this term. Okay, so I'm going to do dYCO times N dt and that's going to be equal to N dot CO in. That's going to be a, a constant. And then minus YCO. That's also the same concentration that's over here. Okay, and then uh, Okay, and then we're going to also have N dot C O N. Okay, because those were equal. Okay, so now we have our, our differential equation. Um, we said that N was going to be constant, so that can come out in front of the differential. So let's just go ahead and write this um, in terms of Y C O. Okay, minus Y C O. Okay, so we have our differential equation. So now what we're going to use is, um, you know, to solve this differential equation, there's a couple different uh, techniques that we can use. First one um, that I'll review is separate and integrate. Uh, next one uh, we can use is to numerically solve um, these with, uh, with solvers. So let's go ahead and do the separate and integrate. With separate and integrate, we have uh, two variables here. We have y, c, l and we have time. So what we're going to do is we're just going to separate, meaning put all the terms that are YCO on the left side and all the terms that are on uh, t time on the right side, and then we'll integrate both of those. Now in this case we're going to integrate from 0 to YCO final and from 0 to a certain time. Okay, so initial concentration we're assuming is uh, 0. Okay, so let's go ahead and, and do this for um, for this example. Okay, so what I'm going to do is go ahead and bring all of the uh, YCO terms onto the um, left hand side. Okay, and I've just got to divide that over. So N dot CO in minus YCO times N dot CO in. Okay, so I've got um, all of the y terms on this side and then my time terms on that side. Now I'll go ahead and integrate both sides. Okay, and what I want to do is calculate what the YCO is going to be at any time t. So um, I can integrate this, but, but you're looking at this and probably wondering how do I integrate something like this. And um, you know, so just for review, 
if you have something like 1 over z, dz, that's going to be the natural log of z. And then we're going to integrate from, for example, uh, z1 to z2, and that would be natural log of z2 minus natural log of z1. And that would also be natural log, if you want to combine these, z2 over z1. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're just going to create a new variable z and set that equal to what our denominator term is there. Um, okay, so that's going to be y n dot c o n minus y c o n dot uh, c o n. Okay, so um, let's go ahead and differentiate this because we need to get um, d uh, y c o. Okay. We need to be able to get an expression for that as well to be able to convert this and that value into z values. So let's just go ahead and differentiate both sides. Okay, so if I uh, take dz is going to be equal to negative n dot c o n times y c uh, d y c o. Okay, so I have um, an expression for d y c o that's going to be negative one over n. Uh, C O N um, times D Z. And then I can take this and go ahead and substitute that here. And then I can also substitute this Z value. So in fact, what I'm doing is just integrating Z like I showed before. And then in my final answer, I can just go ahead and um, substitute back in the Z values. Okay, so I have um, this is going to be equal to natural log of z. Okay, um, and uh, when I made this substitution, I also had this term and this term that can come out front. Okay, so this is going to be negative um, n. Now let me make a little bit more room here. It's going to be negative n. Uh, divided by n dot c l n. Okay, and um, let me go ahead and just transform this back. Okay, substitute uh, the z value back in. And that's going to be natural log of n dot c l n minus y c l n dot c l n. Okay, and I'm going to do it for the integration limits. Okay, zero to y, co final. Okay, so now I can go ahead and just substitute um, these in, and as you saw, I could put it into um, this form right here. I'll go ahead and do that uh, right now. So negative n over n co in um, times the natural log of n dot c o n minus y c o final n dot c o n divided by okay and if I plug in zero here all I'm left with is n dot c o n okay so um, all right so these are going to uh, cancel right here and uh, then what I'm left with is negative n over n c o n natural log of 1 minus y c o final. Okay, so that is the left hand side of this. And then this term on the right hand side, that's just going to be equal to t. Okay, so let's set this equal to t for the right hand side. And uh, then let's go ahead and solve for y c o final. We have uh, t, but we want to get y c o final. So that's going to be, let's move this over to the right side. Okay, times t. And I'll take the exponential of both sides. Okay, and that is going to give me, um, okay, so exponential 
of both sides and so that's going to give me uh, um, exp negative n dot c o n over n times t okay and then y c o final is going to be 1 minus this exponential okay so we have our solution with respect to time and um, you know we may also want um, you know this time weighted average okay so here we have uh, you know 35 parts per million time weighted average then what we just calculated is the YCO so that we can check to see if we're underneath the 200 ppm limit and then um, the other one is uh, you know time weighted average so how do we how do we compute um, the time weighted average for this as well um, so we have a YCO uh, final um, and, and so what we want to do is if the concentration in the room okay is going up and then down and then up something like that um, what we're going to do is um, is go ahead and, and integrate this uh, YCO um, over time and then uh, divided by the time that it's been at that at that level okay so um, so one of the things that that uh, uh, we'll do is just define um, the integral of YCO and we're going to go ahead and integrate YCO um, DT okay and that will be the integral up to a certain time and then to get the uh, YCO um, time weighted average then then what we'll do is we'll just take this integral of YCL and then divide it by the total time up to that point and that'll give us the uh, time weighted average for the CO concentration okay so um, just to review we wrote a, a, a species balance for carbon monoxide um, in this room okay um, and then we um, developed expressions we had to use the ideal gas law to convert from volumetric flow rate to a molar flow rate and also from a volume to the total number of moles that are in that certain volume okay so after we did that we just um, did a separate and separate and integrate as you can see there and then um, just came up with a, uh, a time dependent solution for the y um, as a function of time and uh, we're assuming that the inlet flow rate and the total moles are constant so this is just a function of time and then we briefly discuss how to calculate the um, the time weighted average for CO in the room as well okay so there's going to be a couple um, additional videos and what we're going to do is um, show how to solve the original differential equation and we'll do that in uh, MATLAB okay and we'll do that in uh, Python so the advantage of solving them numerically is that we don't have to integrate them um, analytically okay so that's an analytical um, analytical solution uh, by integrating it ourselves or we can use a numerical approach um, and so we can just write the differential equation and then solve it directly instead of um, an analytical solution